So welcome back for a, another episode of Artists in Residence Live. This is this fun uh, thing we've been doing in conjunction with our 13 Feet Off the Ground Artists Collective. And what we've been doing is visiting with artists in their studios to see how they are uh, managing and how they're affected by what's going on in the world today. Plus, it's just a really good excuse for a visit with people we love <laughs> and, uh, and for peeking inside studios, which I always love. And if that's something that you enjoy, uh, make sure you hit subscribe on this channel. You can hit the little bell if you want to get uh, notifications when we have a new episode. Today, we are meeting with one one of my 13 Feet Off the Ground Artist Collective sisters, Rosemary Burden. Rosemary, thanks for making the time to meet today. Well, thank you, Carol. This is going to be fun, I think. Yay. One of the yeah. reasons I wanted to invite you was at times I've come and stayed at your place when we've been doing things in, in right. North End. And I love, love, love your garden. So I love that that's going to be part of what we see today. So if you wouldn't mind taking a few moments and just introducing yourself. Okay. I'm Rosemary Burden. Um, I'm a visual artist and I live in North Vancouver. And my studio is in my home and it expands to the outdoors. And I use, I use mostly mixed media. I kind of call myself a jack of all trades because if I have an idea, I sometimes have to teach myself a, a technique to make the idea come to fruition. So I'm not really very good at anything, but I teach myself as I go along. <laughs> you can get good at anything. <laughs> 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 right on. Um, like I said, I just love your space and that's going to be a fun part to get into. But uh, just uh, for those of you who are new to this, I'm Carol McQuaid. I am also an artist. I'm primarily a printmaker and painter. And you can see a little bit of my um, my printmaking loft behind us here. If you want to see more of it, you can go to the first episodes of this series and you'll get the full tour. Um, so Rose, let's just dive in. I'm going to pull up the okay. photo you sent me of your magical space. So here we go. Okay, that's um, some teapots that were in an installation out in Darts Hill Garden in Surrey last year. They had plants in them and now they've retired back to my garden. That's an old clay piece from 25 years ago when I first started back into making art. It's not very pretty, but he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> He's, He's a reminder that you do get better, I think. <laughs> There's a, a later piece of clay. I'm not working in clay now, but... Um, oh, and those cable spools are left over from an installation that was in uh, Abbotsford at the Reach Gallery in Abbotsford, now, now used as a potting table. <laughs> and an outdoor space. I like to reuse everything if I possibly can. Those are my compost bins, which also become drawing tables when I need to be outside making a nasty mess. Another retired sculpture from a garbage thing we did. And that's my outdoor storage area for all the bits and bobs that don't need to be inside. Washing line and drying of stuff line. And now you're coming to the inside of the studio. More leftover cable spools. A bit grubby. They've been out with tomato plants on them all summer. <laughs> and, and this is my uh, major main work table inside with all my untidy crayons and bits and bobs on it. Some of my new, um, new projects that I'm working on have been for a couple of years. Um, and still more of, there's my dad. He, looks down on me from keeps me in line <laughs> and some more bits from my uh, latest project and uh, inside there's me sorry shouldn't have been there in, <laughs> inside my cupboard i got my i'm in my son's old bedroom so it's not very big and all my wonderful books i love my books they're a great resource for me but get stuck with anything i just look there and dive in and three hours later I come out nice. and uh, yeah storage paper storage of um, um, sketchbooks and 
on top of some drawers and there's a table my husband made when we first got married, which we can't use anywhere, but it's a great place for storing things on top of and underneath of. And that's my, uh, was my potting table outdoors and now is my indoor work table for the winter. Nice. So it's all kind of, not tidy. It's all, uh, everything has a two ways of being used. Like that potting table was, um, very grubby so I had to clean it before I brought it in but it's nice to have a table and a window in the winter. What are those on top of the table there? They look like little teeny tomatoes or something. They are. There's the last in my tomato crop which has to be on a south window because they won't ripen oh, no. <laughs> We didn't have we didn't have very good sunshine this year so uh, yeah. my tomatoes didn't never turn but they are turning now. No. Yeah they're they're okay. So we're seeing your garden here in the fall and uh, like I'm sitting here in my studio I'm looking out the window and it is dumping snow right now. Oh my gosh. We still have a little bit of fall but let's go to your garden. When was this one shot? That's about the end of May I believe and I'm starting looking at the lions there in the distance. Nice. Lilac. This is the back garden so Beautiful. Yes. Each of these workspaces um, I use in the uh, when I need to for my artwork as well. There's the teapots. Yeah. I remember <laughs> got... buying those when I came and stayed at your house. I love them. They just... Yeah, they're quite fun. Yeah, they're very grubby now. So there's our outdoor chairs. We can sit in the shade and and. Uh, this is the shady side of the house normally. Um, bit too much green there, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Never too much. <laughs> <laughs> not when, no, not no, at the moment. No. <laughs> <laughs> we just painted, painted the shed, so uh, that's looking a lot better. Yeah. And then we go down to the end. Um, where I started off with my Ladio. You can see that it's an artist's garden. Like I look at that and I just wanna invite myself over with my watercolor kit and sit <laughs> paint it all day long in all seasons. It must just be just so inspiring to have that space right outside your door. It's particularly lucky now, I think during, uh, during the pandemic to have an outdoor space that yeah. you can go into that's your own and as you said, all year round, even in the winter, it's, it's, it gets a bit soggy underfoot, but it's really somewhere you can take a deep breath and just look at the bare trees in the winter and the full green leaf. I love the change of seasons. Yeah. Um, we're not getting as much fall color this year as we normally do. I feel very, very lucky to have that space, very lucky. Yeah. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be living in a basement suite or something like yeah. that or an apartment with no balcony or exactly so are you finding like are you spending a lot more time at home than you would have been otherwise or what's your what's your day-to-day -day reality like with what's going on in the world doesn't it hasn't actually changed very much at all um my studio is at home it always has been so i can come and go as i want to I, i'm not somebody that can go in at nine and finish at four i can come in at seven in the morning or 10 o'clock at night or whenever I feel like coming in um, that's when I come in so I feel very fortunate to have that so really nothing much has really changed for me the only difference is that because we haven't done any traveling we have um, we have a camper van that we like to take off and go to places and we just haven't done that this year I'm sure we will next year but I mean Carol you know what that's like because you're a big traveler yeah. And it must have been awful not to be able to go anywhere. I would have thought that it would be awful. And the, the odd thing is, I am so content in my space. Like, oh, that's wonderful. I never would, I never would have foreseen that. But I'm, uh, you know, like inhabiting my house differently than, than I had in the past. Even giving up, giving up having an external studio. It's, um, yeah, no, I mean, Obviously, it's not a perfect situation, but uh, but there are parts of it that uh, that I, I feel like I'm nestling into my house the way you naturally have nestled into yours. And because <laughs> we've been uh, here for so long, 
Yeah, it turns out it was a smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew, right? Who knew? <laughs> but, but yes, you have, because you've you've made part of your a part of your place into a studio space, haven't you? Spe yeah, specifically. I've yeah, I'm kind of using the whole house. Like I do a lot of my stuff downstairs on the big dining room table. Um, I've got my office downstairs that I'm doing some things in. And then uh, I've got my, I'll just twitch this over here. I've got my press up here in the loft and uh, space to hang stuff. And so, yeah, I'm I'm filtering. My husband keeps saying like, I've got these four feet at the end of this end of the sofa. And this is mine, no matter what else you do, don't touch the spot. <laughs> I know, right? Because I'm the same. At the moment, I'm reframing a whole bunch of different things, yeah. uh, different artworks and changing the art around the house just because we're here and it's nice to, we've painted the inside of the house, two, two more rooms. And so I'm moving artwork around and reframing stuff. And, and I've got the whole of the dining table, half of the sideboard in the, kit, in the dining room is now full of artwork and books and bits and bobs and I've got a whole cabinet set up for my beading supplies so I know what you mean yeah. you yeah. just don't don't touch anything because it might fall over and explode beads <laughs> and paper everywhere so. but it would be a beautiful explosion <laughs> it would be <laughs> <laughs> noisy when you vacuum them up too yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how are you you said you're not doing your traveling in your in your camper van and like usually not usually but several times we've done some kind of trip with our artist collective we you know yes. we get out and do these things how are you finding it you're there with your husband in the house and uh, and uh, how are you finding just kind of being more stationary? Well, it's strange because Zoom actually is huge. We've been in touch with groups, like we went to Italy in 2005 with a group. Um, so we Zoom with them every two or three weeks. And then a, another group that we Zoom with um, once every two weeks. And I've been more in touch with, with my friends and and family now than I think I have been in many years because because we are stuck at home and so are they so we're making a point of talking as as is everyone else I think yeah. and I do find also the big there's a, been a big change in our street you know how everyone came out was banging drums for the first responders at seven o'clock well we're still doing it <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the dark, but there's about six houses in our street, and um, it's not not everyone's there every night. But there's always somebody out there, and even if it's raining, we'll go down and wave and go back in again. And it's been really fun because this particular group of neighbors, as, as I say, six to seven houses, we've started to share things. Like we had a rock wall made in. Um, February, a beautiful new rock wall around our garden because our at the, at the front because our um, old one was falling down in chunks and I thought it was going to fall on my head one day. So anyway, the big rocks from that leftover went across the street. So she, and she has a, um, Jen has a kind of a a flat rock area where she has plants coming through. So she has now has smaller rocks and bigger rocks. It looks really beautiful. And then. They did another little renovation a few weeks ago with, and she had tons of small rocks. So now I've got all those small rocks and I've made gravel paths <laughs> around the garden. So this is the kind of thing that's going on. Um, we had a, a pumpkin beer tasting last week and then a few weeks ago somebody brought out cinnamon buns and it's just been remarkably fun actually. And I can't believe how it's kept going, you know, over all these months. I don't know what's going to happen in the winter, but we have plans for carport get togethers every now and then. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And it, through the winter that as well, are you thinking? Yeah, I think so. Everyone yeah. wants to keep it going. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And your neighborhood has, I, I think was always very neighborly, but would you say it's more so? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Definitely more so. And um, a lot of our neighbors, I mean, there's three or four lots of our neighbors who've been here over 50 years. We've been here 35. Um, 
some people just a few few years but it i don't know whether it's the street itself we've got a quite a wide road so it's easy to to meet on the road without being run over it's not a it is a through street but it's not a major through way so you know there's the two kids across the street they come out and play and the uh, and the young boy comes out every now and then and plays us his uh, saxophone <laughs> oh he's lovely yeah. he learned oh canada for july the first and um, they're originally from australia so it's quite fun to watch their development and their accents changing as they become more canadian and it's it's, it's lovely I, i'm just really enjoying that part of it yeah. and i don't think that would have happened if we hadn't had lockdown you know I was in a music store the other day. Um, <laughs> expanding yes. my guitar collection. <laughs> and I asked them how business has been. And he said, it, like, music in musical instruments, it's booming. Because everybody is like, well, I'm home now. I mean, I've always wanted to learn how to play the guitar or saxophone or yes. whatever. I wonder if that's happening with artists as well. Like, people who, who wouldn't necessarily put artist on their business card but if people are taking more time to be creative and and uh, and get the kind of tools and, or play with the toys they have you know it's uh, I think so I yeah. think so because you do tend to look around you and think oh yeah I haven't used that let's try using that yeah, yeah I mean I've been grabbing all my old crayons and going through everything and seeing what works and chucking out the pens that don't work and I think that um, because we're contained I think I think people are doing that and of course there's lots of things like your YouTube videos online are wonderful I just sent one of yours out to all my other friends and had a reply back today to say that your latest one on printmaking was so useful she's gone right ahead and used it so oh, awesome that's so nice to hear yeah Thank you. <laughs> yeah so that's yeah so I mean this is the sort of thing I think I mean it's a huge world but it's it's compressed into our thank god for videos and thank god for um social media which i know has a dark side but it also has an amazing light side to it as well yeah and i think people are i mean i've got another friend who's making books she works from home so she's been making beautiful books um other friends said oh yeah i'm gonna try um painting or i'm gonna try drawing so you know and I will say well go on YouTube because you can find anything on YouTube yeah. you know so yeah. tutorials mm -hmm. and with your work um, like I, I saw that stack of sketchbooks I'm dying to I'm gonna ask you to open one of them up for it. But, <laughs> okay but have you found that what you're doing has actually changed like has your artwork changed at all through this mm, no I'm quite surprised because I am going back into my sketchbooks because I'm in the room more than I used to be. And I go back into my sketchbooks and it's amazing. I don't know whether it's my age or what it is, but I seem to be doing the same thing, more or less, as I was doing 15, 20 years ago. And I've gone back into my sketchbooks and I read things I've written and I think, oh, nothing changes. <laughs> but maybe that doesn't matter. <laughs> maybe that doesn't matter. No. So I find well, about three years ago, just after we all went to um, Italy, I was in another residency up at Copper Moss, up at Seashelt, and that was a week. And we were very, it was very quiet, very beautiful place. And I started to think, you know, I've got to start um, not going out and buying things, not going out and, and oh, look at being like a magpie, because I'm a magpie, I like anything shiny and glitzy, I'm like, ooh, I want that. And new pens and you know things I thought I've got to use everything I've got so I started doing that about three years ago and I've kept it going so um, from that point of view nothing's changing I think some of my images are changing but not not really no yeah. what about you um hmm. yeah I would say my work is changing a bit I have these pieces on the drying rack behind me here that are kind of politically motivated oh I love those. <laughs> but they were in your YouTube tutorial. No, they were, were they? Uh, no, they came right no, they after weren't. that. Uh, the the yeah. the placemats that are that are well, that's, that's right. right. That that's was right. Um, 
Um, but no, those are uh, those are a little bit political. And then I think maybe what's changing a little bit is I took a big hiatus from working uh, on artwork, and now I'm doing it again. Uh, and uh, I've also in the um, in with what's been happening, I've been doing a lot more reading because I've been spending more time at home, long dog walks with Audible, um, and that's making its way into the work. And uh, I'm just reading right now. Um, based on Ruth Bader Ginsburg and my book club is reading Ruth Bader Ginsburg whatever it's a freestyle month read whatever Ruth Bader Ginsburg you like and uh, and so I've been reading a couple of books based on on her life and uh, so that's coming out in my next piece and I yeah so I would say my work is changing a little bit because it was always very travel oriented and experiencing new places kind of how people live in them oriented and now that I'm uh, a little more stationary yeah I think my my focus has changed can we see inside yeah. sketchbooks yeah yeah <laughs> I remember the Actually, last time I was in your house you opened up a drawer full of drawings and I just fell in love with them and <laughs> and uh, now I have one thanks to you so <laughs> oh, that's right I'm dying to see what else you have <laughs> the doodle yeah well this I've got it an old sketchbook from um, when we went to Italy actually and I because I was I was have to have a book where I write down my ideas and stuff you know when we went to the meetings and everything and there's I don't know if you can see that but oh yes yeah remember that 13 feet off the ground oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah so I've got um, write down little things that I'm told and or that I've heard sometimes and I've got here a piece which I think is really actually very sad Karen says our neighbors who own the flat we are living in are Paolo and Petrina and their son Gregorio their older son was crushed by a stone wall he was a sculptor so I know also across the street, Franco and Maria. Franco is a shepherd and a basket maker. How, I mean, how wonderful is that, a shepherd and a basket maker? But two Our little- like, little apartment in Graniti in Sicily? Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. So th little things like that, I tend to write in my sketchbooks. And um, there's a really old sketchbook from first year at art school. Yeah. And, it's just crazy because I had to do a, um, I mean, this, this is all over the place. I had to do a, a project on a nursery rhyme. So I did the princess and the pea. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, love it. <laughs> love it. It's all cut out paper, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, so there's all, and then doodles everywhere. Yeah. Um, Typical I'm, art school stuff, you know, I'm all over the place. Yeah. Um, That's part yeah, of the beauty of being in a house for 35 years is you can keep all this stuff, you know, like. I know. Yeah. yeah. It is. I've got it. I've got them all piled up um, behind me. And there's another sketchbook here. I did this. I did a project on uh, um, an area of North Van which is uh, down by the waterfront and it's the industrial area and how I got it was I wanted to do a project on, on a, a geographical part of Vancouver so I got a map and I threw a rock and it landed on this area and I did all kinds of, of research onto it and I, I took it into uh, my instructors at school and they said oh that looks like a a really long project like several years well that put me right off so I didn't uh, do it anymore but um, but there's some uh, photographs in here if I can find them this was one area that was I just did a bit of a collage -y thing I don't know if you can see oh, that yeah. and then the front of it is, uh, I don't know if you can see that as well. Yeah. It's the uh, 
the grain building down at the waterfront. So my, yeah, my sketchbooks are full of everything, like ideas and photographs, doodles, um, parts of essays that I'm trying to work out, but I have to do it by hand because I don't want to write it on my computer and then lose it or something. This was back in 15, 15 years ago. Um, I, I find I go back to them all the time. And when I do go back to them, I find that not, not as I said before, not much has changed. It's, um, I'm still thinking the same way, but I guess the work is changing a little bit. Yeah. Well, I look at that and that reminds me of what you did when we were in Sicily together. So just to set the stage, we're all staying in this beautiful little town and there's 12 of us and 11 of us are, are out painting on walls. And you took this amazing parcel of, uh, um, what would the word be? Uh, not disregarded, but... Uh, it was a garbage dump. It was a garbage dump. <laughs> I was looking for something poetic, but you're spot on. <laughs> and you took that piece of land and you transformed it into something magical. And, uh, you know, I look at your art, your yard, and I look at your notes and, and uh, all of it kind of weaves together. And uh, yeah, you just have this magical way of, of uh, tinkering with space and things and elements and assembling. And uh, I love it. It's beautiful to see. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, I love working outside. I, that's one of my favorite things, if I can take my work outside. Um, we were supposed to do a, a show at Darts Hill Garden again this year. And um, it was cancelled, of course, because of COVID, but I think it's going to happen next year. And I made a, I did a poem in beading. So I translate the, I translate the English into binary. So each letter is like eight bits long. So I convert that into beads. I might have them here somewhere. And so I get these long glittering strands, which is actually a, um, a code. It's coded poetry, and I'm hoping that they'll will do that again this year because, and it because it, it should hang from a tree and then just shimmer. So because I love hanging them outside. The the last time I did beading, it was in a gallery, but I think they look much better outside. Yeah. So yeah, upcoming shows are more likely to be outside, I would say. <laughs> and do you have any shows that are still happening moving forward, or what's uh? What does your lineup moving forward look like right now? Um, well, I hope Darts Hill, all being well, it will happen next year. Um, if they are open again there, um, I was just actually out there yesterday because they're doing a fundraiser for uh, their garden society. So I took some stuff out there for them and um, it's open and it's beautiful. So um, that's usually in March or April. That's a group that I'm not part of, but they invite people from outside every now and then to to join in and I was lucky enough to be invited to, to go and join them. They're a Surrey art group. Um, and then I've got another show coming up. I think it's February of 2022 up in Seashelt with two friends. So um, we're still in negotiation processes, but that's where all the, where the little drawings will go, the little drawings. And this guy, he's, um, can you see him? I don't know if you can see him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a poppy seed in a shell and a feather. And I got, I was given all these poppy seeds by a friend and I had to use them all up. So I just <laughs> glued things onto them. And so, and then I draw them. I mean, they're totally inconsequential, but it's really fun. <laughs> it's just fun to play with them. But um, yeah, so I've got lots of them, like hundreds of them. So. That is, that's you in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to play. <laughs> so awesome. So, Rose, if people want to find you online, where where should they go? Okay, I'm on. Um, I've got a web page, which is sometimes, but it's sort of up to date. It's just Rosemary Burden. R O S E M A R Y B U R D E N dot com, and then I'm on Facebook and Instagram under Rosemary Burden. So. I don't do a lot on Instagram, but I put the odd thing up there. So yeah. every now and then, I just like other people's Instagram. It's much more interesting. <laughs> I can I can lose an embarrassing amount of time a day on Instagram. It is it's a, it's a visual feast. 
Well, I will put, uh, I'll put your website in the show notes and any links to those shows and things that you talked about will be there. Thank you for making the time to have this visit and get caught up. So much fun. Yeah. It Thank is. you, Carol. Yay, right on. And for those of you watching, uh, like I said, if you enjoy these kind of studio tours and visits, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, the notification button. And we'll be back soon with more studio tours. And uh, yeah, Rose, uh, really loved being able to see your garden from my snowy loft. So <laughs> thank you. Go make a snowman, Carol. I will. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>